Okay, this is the P3 paper from January 2024. It's question number four, and it's an interesting question because it's lots of different topics in here. Uh, first part, we start off doing some work on algebraic fractions. Second part, we've got to differentiate, and we're going to be differentiating using the quotient rule. And then we jump into lots of work on functions. We're going to be finding the inverse of a function, the composite of a function, etc. So let's make a start by looking at the first part, which says, can we show that that complicated function there can simplify down to 2x over 3x minus 5? Yeah, absolutely, we can give it a go. So part A, fx is given by 2x squared minus 32 all divided by 3x squared plus 7x minus 20 and then plus 8 over 3x minus 5. So when I'm looking at this fraction here, we've got to use a little bit of our common sense, a little bit of previous experience here. I'm pretty sure I know what's going to go on with this. This one's going to factorise and actually let's start that. If I do 2 out as a factor which gives me x squared minus 16, I know x squared minus 16 is the difference of two squares. That's going to be x minus 4, x plus 4. But not only that, when I'm differentiating, sorry, when I'm factorising the denominator here, and I've got videos that show you how to do that, I'm not going to spend any time showing you how to do that, but I would not be at all surprised if I end up with an x plus 4 or an x minus 4 in there, simply to cancel out with one of the ones on the numerator. If we do factorise it, it actually factorises to 3x minus 5, x plus 4. As I say, go and have a look at some of my other videos to show you how to do that. That really isn't a surprise either, because notice now we've got the 3x minus 5 occurring um, in both of those. So that's my first step. Second step would be to take the difference of two squares, x plus 4, all over 3x minus 5, x plus 4 plus 8 over 3x minus 5 and I say yeah absolutely expecting at this stage then to say right okay well that'll cancel with that so that leaves me the same denominator for, for both of these so I've got 2x minus 4 over 3x minus 5 plus 8 over 3x minus 5 well I can jump pretty much straight to the answer from there I suppose I'm not pr trying to prove it aren't I so 2x minus 8 plus 8 all over 3x minus 5 which then equals 2x over 3x minus 5 so hopefully we don't have too many of you saying well why did you do that and how did you know that practice do lots more of these and then um, they'll become easier and easier as you do them but that's part a done Part B says, show using calculus that f is a decreasing function. So just a reminder to you, decreasing functions means that f dash x will always be less than naught. My differential will be less than naught. But let's worry about that once we've done the differential. So part B, first of all, we've got to actually differentiate. So if fx is equal to 2x over 3x minus 5, I'm now going to differentiate this. And I'm going to say, in fact, I'm just write it down here just for ease of doing it. fx is equal to 2x over 3x minus 5. And then what I'm going to do, as I say, this is a quotient. u is equal to 2x. v is equal to 3x minus 5. I always lay out my quotients like this, you see from other videos. Differentiating that gives me that. Differentiating 3x minus 5 gives me that. And then f dash x is going to be v du by dx minus u dv by dx all over v squared. You may learn that in a different way, but as long as um, you're following the same process through, I write it down every single time. It makes it a little bit easier for me to um, remember what I'm doing. Then v du is those two, u dv is those two when I'm multiplying. So I'm going to get two lots of 3x minus 5 minus three lots of 2x, all divided by v squared, so all divided by 3x minus 5 squared. Just be careful about that minus when we're doing it then. So I'm going to get 
6x minus 10 minus the 6x all over 3x minus 5 squared, which is then going to give me minus 10 over 3x minus 5 squared. And now because it's just minus 10, what we can now say is that this part is squared is always going to be positive or uh, greater or equal to naught. It can't be naught. Um, x was x is greater than oh no, I don't say where sorry x is uh, greater than two on this one here. Um, yeah, so going back to it, so the denominator always has to be a positive, which means that this function, this f x f dash x sorry, always has to be negative. So f dash x is always less than naught, therefore it is a decreasing function. So that's what we were asked to do in the first place. So part B done as well. Okay, on to part C and D now, which are uh, focusing a little bit more on our functions. We've got that GX is given by three plus two log X, X being greater than or equal to one, and it says find the inverse of G. Okay, so if we've got to find the inverse of G, part C, we've got that GX was equal to three plus two log X, where X is gonna be greater than or equal to one. So the way that we do these, say Y is equal to, oh, excuse me, handwriting, Y is equal to three plus two log X, and now just rearrange to make X the subject, and then that'll give us the inverse function. So do it slowly, y minus three is equal to two log x. So y minus three over two is equal to log x. So x is equal to e both sides to get rid of that is e to the y minus three all over two is my inverse function. So g to the minus one x then is equal to e to the x minus 3 all over 2. You should really say what the range of it is going to be, and it's x greater than or equal to 3. Where do I get that from? The domain of this one is going to be the range of this function. The range of this function, remember we've got x greater than or equal to 1, so we're going to get gx is equal to 3 plus, well, if it was 2 log 1, 2 log 1 is 0, so we get gx is equal to 3, so it's going to be greater than or equal to 3. I've rushed that a little bit, but, you know, we've got lots of other stuff to do here. So um, that's the inverse function. So we're finally going to finish off. It's a long video, this one. Part D. So what did it ask us? It said, there's part C done. Part D, can we find the exact value? It will be the exact value for A for which G F A equals 5. Okay, well, let's have a go at doing that then. So we had the F A would be equal to 2A over 3A minus 5, obviously. So G F A means do G with that as my input. So 3 plus 2 log, and then 2a over 3, oops, excuse me, a minus 5. We want that to be equal to 5. Okay, so we've just got to see if we can solve this. Take the 3 over, so 2 log 2a over 3a minus 5 is going to be equal to 2. Divide those out, log... 2a over 3a minus 5 is going to be equal to 1. E both sides to get rid of the log. So we're going to get 2a over 3a minus 5 is equal to e to the 1, which is e, obviously. And I'm just trying to rearrange this now to get a equals. So 2a will equal to e. 3a minus 5, multiply it out, 2a is going to be 3ae minus 5e. Collect the e's on one side, sorry, collect the a's on one side and everything else on the other side. I'm actually going to swap that one round and say 3ae minus 2a. Take a out as a factor, 
3e minus 2 is equal to 5e. And then finally, drop the uh, 3e minus 2 down, Three, sorry, 5e over 3e minus 2. And then that's the actual answer. That's, that's an exact value, isn't it? So the value of a that makes that true is what we just found there. And then, wow, yeah, quite a long question. Lots of different parts to it. Uh, but I hope that should be good for you to revise from. Hope that all makes sense.